Russia is about to take over the month-long presidency of the UN Security Council. Let's talk about what that means for the UN agenda with Russia's envoy to the UN, Vitaly Cherkin. Mr Cherkin, thanks ever so much for taking the time tonight to join us on RT. I mean, what then is at the forefront of Russia's minds now the, Now you've taken the presidency for a month? For, well, what's top of the list to tackle? A long list, isn't it? Well, it is a long list and it's uh, looking like a very crowded month of March. Uh, the highlight of our presidency is going to be a ministerial debate on Afghanistan, which will be chaired by Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov, and we expect the participation of a number of foreign ministers from both Security Council member and uh, non-member states, because everybody will be uh, invited to speak on members of the United Nations, those who choose to participate. And uh, the uh, mandate of the UN mission on Afghanistan is going to be extended for another year. And that, of course, is going to be very important year for Afghanistan with the upcoming uh, presidential elections in uh, uh, April of 2014 with the unclear prospects of uh, foreign military presence uh, uh, when uh, U.S. forces and uh, ISAF uh, international forces are going to pull out in 2014, the unclear process of uh, prospects for national dialogue and reconciliation. So there are so many important issues with uh, a lot at stake uh, before the Security Council that uh, we think that uh, this is going to be a very uh, important element of uh, our program of work for the month of March. Mm -hmm. Then and I think uh, we're going to have an important uh, discussion on... Um, please go ahead. Sorry, so there's a small delay on the line. Also, of course, the uh, other big important decision or uh, talks to be had about what to do with Syria next. A big schism amongst uh, various UN members about what is the best thing to do. How is Russia going to try and bring people together then over the next month? Well, uh, you know, uh, there is nothing specific at this point uh, in our program of work on Syria. But, of course, uh, uh, Syria comes uh, our way... Uh, every now and then uh, uh, for, for under different uh, uh, circumstances. For instance, yesterday uh, there was a stirring briefing to the uh, consultation of the Security Council of uh, humanitarian agencies describing the awful situation uh, in uh, that country. Uh, so, of course, there is a lot of worry and frequent discussion to the Security Council of the situation in Syria. Our position is very simple. We believe that the violence must stop and for that dialogue must be established without precondition. And uh, the government is saying that they have outlined uh, their negotiating team and they have outlined their proposals for dialogue. There is a Geneva document of uh, uh, June uh, 2012, which we believe should serve as the consensus basis for dialogue. Uh, unfortunately, in the past few days, the opposition uh, seems to have been backtracking from the original statement which was made by the leader of the uh, national coalition, Mr. Khatib, about uh, readiness to go into dialogue uh, with, the, with the Syrian government. This is the key issue. Without dialogue, I'm afraid, uh, and without the uh, political will on the part of uh, all Syrians, all the main stakeholders uh, in that country, the international community cannot do much. We cannot resolve that crisis for them. We can help them. Russia is trying to do exactly that by talking uh, at the same time with the government and the various opposition groups, uh, urging them to enter di into dialogue. But unless they themselves make that determination, I'm afraid violence will continue and the crisis will, will, will continue to spiral. And, of course, the Syrian opposition very much in the news again today. They've been promised more non-lethal help from the US. Uh, if that's the case, where's the uh, uh, lethal support coming from, do you think? What's Russia's current view on that? Well, uh, I, you know, the, this, uh, the, there is this uh, general uh, understanding that uh, maybe... Uh, Qatar is supplying weapons uh, to, uh, to Syria, but here I am uh, uh, basing myself mostly on newspaper uh, accounts and on the previous experience because it's well known now that in the course of the crisis uh, in Libya, for instance, Qatar happened to be a major supplier of uh, weapons uh, into that country. You know, there is this, all this talk about non-lethal uh, uh, assistance from the United States. There is a certain clear division of labor. The United States, for a number of reasons, chooses not to sell its hands with direct supply of weapons to, uh, to uh, the uh, armed groups, because among them there are some terrorists and others uh, with whom the United States would uh, uh, prefer not to be associated. But at the same time, they, uh, they uh, give uh, a wink and a nod to those who provide direct military uh, aid to, uh, to uh, uh, rebel armed groups. And all this is very unfortunate, because it uh, takes attention away uh, from uh, the need to en enter into political dialogue. Instead of asking for more uh, assistance of various sorts, the opposition groups, including the National, National Council, uh, should be sticking uh, to uh, their initial uh, offer or expression of readiness to enter into dialogue, 
should, should be amplifying their political program because we have not seen a political program from them. Uh, the government in the speech of President Assad in January did outline a political program. Maybe it was not satisfactory for, uh, for the opposition, but at least it was there. They should have and uh, should have and should now reciprocate by outlining their political program, uh, which, uh, which they could bring to the table uh, of dialogue with the government and uh, Russia and uh, we hope other important members of the international community um, uh, would be there to facilitate those discussions. Ambassador, I'd like to talk for a moment about uh, the latest in Iran. There's still so, no significant breakthrough, of course, in those talks in Kazakhstan. Iran said they were, uh, they were in some ways positive, but the general consensus was not a lot was done. The talks, further talks were agreed. What are your thoughts about that? Well, my understanding was that uh, it was a sort of a positive meeting, and it's, of course, very good news that they have already now agreed to have an expert meeting within weeks, and then in early uh, April another session of this uh, uh, negotiation between Ms., uh, Mrs. Ashton and uh, Mr. Jalili and uh, uh, the political directors from uh, the six countries who are accompanying those talks and negotiating uh, with Iran. Uh, but uh, my understanding is that they yet have to tackle the core of the issues. And the six uh, brought uh, new proposals to the table with active participation of Russia in that process. Was there anything radically new in those talks, sir? Do we know? In, in Kazakhstan. Well, uh, you know, uh, uh, not really radically new, but there are some uh, new important elements which should make it more attractive for the Iranians to finally enter into negotiations on the core of the matter, and uh, that is yet to happen. I'd like to ask you about Bradley Manning. Uh, I'm sure you're familiar with the case. He's uh, pleaded uh, guilty to 10 of the 22 charges. He's now likely to spend 20 years uh, behind bars. Uh, what are your thoughts on that development today? It's the breaking news this hour on RT. I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't, I, did, I, didn't get the, I didn't get the question. Yeah, I'm, the Bradley Manning case, I'm sure, sir, you're, uh, you're absolutely up to speed with it. Um, in the last hour or two, Bradley Manning, uh, the, the, the uh, American private, the whistleblower, as they're calling him, was pleading... I'm, so, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, this is not... I'm, not, I, I'm sorry, this is not something we deal with in the United Nations, and I'm not uh, up to, to, to this. Uh, absolutely, nothing that. wrong with that answer, sir, at all. Um, last quick question. North Korea, it's uh, audaciously ploughing ahead with its nuclear test. Doesn't that strong uh, criticism that uh, came from the UN really only they amount to a slap on the wrist? Well, uh, we made uh, very quickly uh, a press statement where we condemned uh, this nuclear test and uh, expressed our determination to provide an adequate reaction in the form of a resolution of the Security Council. The United States has prepared a draft of, of this resolution, but so far they have chosen not to engage uh, uh, the Russian delegation in, in the discussion of that resolution. We believe that there should be a strong signal uh, of the Security Council to DPRK of disapproval of this uh, uh, dangerous course of action. But at the same time, this should be a kind of a resolution which would also uh, help lead towards the resumption of six-party talks and a diplomatic uh, uh, final resolution of this uh, issue of denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. Vitaly Cherkin, the Russian ambassador to the UN. We know you're a busy man and we do appreciate your time. Thank you, sir.